Hachette not publishing Woody Allen isn't an act of censorship. It's an act of corporate cowardice. So here's the deal with this. I am a huge fan of Woody Allen as an artist. Um, he's probably my favorite living filmmaker. I've extensively researched um, all the allegations and everything, and more than most people. I'm not an expert, but I tried to do my due diligence with it uh, because I saw about 20 of his movies before I knew there were allegations, and it really freaked me out that I had supported someone like that. And uh, I did it back then. This was 2013 by the time I looked into this stuff. And I just recently have done this again because of the controversy. I mean, it really resurfaced, it seems like, after uh, Midnight, in Midnight in Manhattan, Midnight in Paris got traction, and Blue Jasmine did as well. Uh, as we all know, Ronan, Far Ronan Farrow is a very successful journalist. Um, the general media and public consensus is that Woody Allen is guilty, and I'm not here to defend him. I'm not saying he's innocent. I actually don't believe he's innocent. I don't believe that every al every allegation against him is correct. Um, and I'm not going to get into that. I'm not trying to convince you of what he did or did not do. Um, quite frankly, looking at the research I've looked at, if you said he's 100% guilty, I believe everything that Ronan and me have said about him, I think that's reasonable. I think you can come to that conclusion in an informed manner. If you said the opposite, which um, a lot of my friends and Woody Allen groups are very much like, no, Mia's evil, um, believe Moses Farrow, who recently published, I think recently, a blog post saying that uh, Mia Farrow used to beat her children. Uh, she was involved with, I don't say, I don't say too harsh, but but according to what he said, he basically abused, she abused children to the point where they had committed suicide. Um, she had brainwashed them. Other people are saying that Woody Allen brainwashed Sun Yi. She has her own reports out. Um, or there's articles written by her where she's interviewed extensively. And I'm going to include all these links. You can do the research yourself. I'm not an expert. I don't know. I don't think anybody but Woody Allen and Mia Farrow know, quite frankly, including the children. And I don't want to condemn any of the children. I don't want people to think that I'm saying anything negative on Ronan. I actually think he's done a lot of great work as a journalist. Um, whether or not, I, I think he's a victim. I don't know who he's, whose victim he is, Woody's or Mia's. Uh, there's pretty compelling arguments on both ends, actually. Um, I think Sun Yi's a victim in many ways. If you said that he had, uh, she was 20, roughly, between 1921, but I believe the official number was 20, when we all started to, uh, quote unquote, groom her. And you said, you know, she was in an abusive household for Mia, and then Woody swept in this rich filmmaker and uh, swept her away, which was uh, immoral. I could see that. Uh, but my point is is that most people seem to think it's a black and white issue, and it very well could be. But I don't think most people know why or how they hear one side of the story. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he wasn't put in prison for these things. And uh, you can still hate him. You can still be disgusted by what he did. I don't approve of it, even if he was as a 45-year-old man, a uh, film of this 20-year-old girl who happened to be the stepdaughter of his ex-wife. That is incredibly, I wouldn't even call it morally gray. I'm 25, and I probably would not date a 20-year-old. I just think that's weird. I don't approve of it. Um, but, and this is where I stand, you know, you'll get um, the memoir of the girl from Manhattan, the star of it, and she said that she had drug-fueled threesomes with Mia Farrow and Woody Allen. And uh, I, I do believe that. I think she was, I think Mia Farrow and Woody Allen both slept with underage children, um, which I would say 16, yes. Um, it's not like an eight-year-old per se, but I still completely think it's uh, horrible. Uh, I think they're both bad, unreliable, manipulative people, and I don't trust either one of them when it comes down to this story. But here's where I really get conflicted on these things. I'm a big fan of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I 100% believe that Lewis Carroll is a pedophile. Uh, he has to marry Alice. I mean, he is a creepy dude. He used to photograph children naked. Um, which is also a, a criticism uh, put against Alan. Uh, I, I think that the whole book was meant to groom and bribe a young child into falling in love with him as an adult man, as her teacher. And I still love those books. I'm not saying everybody has to. I get if somebody would say it's disgusting, you shouldn't even read it. I totally get that. Um, furthermore, though, I could go, I, I did the research here, I'm going to provide links. I could go on Amazon, I could go on Barnes & Noble, and I could buy Mein Kampf. So like, if we can buy the book from arguably the most evil person <laughs> to have ever lived, 
freely uh, should we be able to buy Woody Allen's book. You run Pharaoh says, and this is a fair point, I don't totally agree, but I get it, he said, uh, my book was fact-checked extensively by the same publisher. Stephen King said it is, is just uh, tone deaf for them to want to publish Ronan Farrell and Woody Allen under the same uh, roof. And I agree, it's stupid, completely moronic. That was the wrong company to take Woody Allen on. And uh, I'll get more into that later, but... So, I think the fact-checking and Ronan Farrell's thing, and, and I get where he's coming from and it is good to fact-check, I don't trust fact-checkers. <laughs> It can be good, it can be important. I'm not saying you should not have things fact-checked. But at the end of the day, the only fact-checker I check, I, I trust is myself. And that's only because I know I have good intentions. I know that if I'm wrong, I'm reckless. I'm not uh, trying to manipulate or whatever. Um, I'm not trying to persuade so much as I'm just ill-informed or just uh, brash or stupid. Uh, but I, I understand the importance of factors. But I do wonder, like, do we need a nanny? For all these things um and at the end of the day like if somebody believes it let's say 100 percent woody's guilty let's say that somebody reads a book and they're convinced by woody allen that he's not i hate to say it but i could live with that collateral <laughs> that's not the most evil thing in the world to me um if it's a historical book i'd say it's actually much more important but i would expect woody allen's memoir to be biased i'd be more shocked if it didn't i'm pretty sure that every biography i've ever read was heavily biased um, I wouldn't go into it trusting it, and quite frankly, if somebody does read it and they take it at face value, they're kind of an idiot, to be quite frank. <laughs> and I think people have the right to be idiots. I think they have the right to be unsupervised idiots. We don't need a big brother telling us uh, what is or isn't true, whether it's factors of good intentions or not. I think that we have the right to do that. But at the end of the day, and this is what's kind of interesting, is uh, John Legend, who I actually really like, and I respect him as an artist, is against this. And he got into beef with a uh, Stephen King, who's an artist that I've enjoyed some of his stuff. I don't respect him. I don't respect his work, but I enjoy a lot of it. Um, you know, Stephen King said basically, uh, he doesn't care about Woody Allen, but it's a bad sign of things to come with this book getting unpublished. And John Legend said, you know, he can say what he needs to say, but they don't have to spend their money and resources uh, to fund it. And, and they're both right. At the end of the day, I agree with both of them. 100% uh, actually, which is really kind of cool to say and what made me decide to do this video is like to say I agree with everyone for once. <laughs> and uh, so here's where it goes a step further for me though. And, and King, uh, he, he put this quite well himself. Why were they publishing him in the first place? Okay, because he, here's my issue. It's, it's not with people who say like, you know, well, he's guilty, he's a monster. I don't have an issue with them. I think they have good intentions. I think that they're protective of children. I think they see, they want justice, and I support that, and I, I, I'm, I believe them. Whether or not I believe the allegations, some of which I do, some of which I don't know. I'm not going to say I don't believe any. Um, I believe that just the people on the ground who think he's guilty, I understand that completely. I think that the people saying we should be able to read it, I want to buy this book. Also, I'm on their side. Um, the, the side that I'm not on um, and you know, like Ronan Farrow's side, where he's like, "Yeah, my abusive, uh, whatever step parent or something, shouldn't be able to do this and uh, spread lies about his innocence." I get that. Um, and I, I believe that he, I believe that he's telling his truth. I'll put it that way. And uh, the the side that I don't get is Hachette's. They knew what they were doing. They didn't not know who Woody Allen was. They knew from the start. They didn't give a shit. They saw money, and that is it. And then, uh, you know, they had an employee walk out. Once they had nothing against those employees, they have every right to do that. I support it. Cool. Um, and once Twitter, you know, had uh, a shit fit over it, then they pulled out. Well, you knew what you were doing the whole time. You just see it as no longer profitable. And uh, as far as I see it, this is a total, a perfect example of uh, corporate just greed and uh, immorality. At the end of the day, posing as morality, which we should always be dubious of. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the other example I'm going to give before I let this go is an artist who I think is 100% guilty, R. Kelly. Once again, I love R. Kelly as an artist. As a human being, no way. So uh, Chance Rapper, Lady Gaga, all these people came on Twitter and like, oh, my God, I worked with him. I can't believe it. Uh, you know, once I found out, I pulled it. Uh, and Chance, actually, he, he addressed it pretty well. But some of the other artists, they pulled their songs off Spotify. They donated the money they made from it, whatever. You knew who the fuck R. Kelly was the whole time. You knew when you made the song with him. You knew when you were asked to do it or when you asked him to do it. 
Um, it's, it's, it's not morality. It's not decent. It's not coming to senses, in my opinion. And I, I think that we should uh, doubt that. I don't think you should give them the benefit of doubt. I don't think you should trust them. Because, uh, quite frankly, you know, like Harvey Weinstein with, like, Oprah and, and uh, what's her name? Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Anna from Interstellar. I forget her name right now. Anne Hathaway. Uh, you know, oh, I didn't know that Harvey Weinstein did this, or there was silence. Like, yes, you did. Uh, Matt Damon did. He actually allegedly called a woman and tried to silence her uh, with Harvey Weinstein allegations like a decade ago. And they're like, I didn't know. Yeah, you fucking did. You know, I, I don't buy that for a second. And this is a weird thing to put on the publishing house video, but at, at the end of the day, I think those, these are kind of the subjects that Longshot Books rise or dies for, is... Uh, ethical business and at the end of the day with them publishing him in the first place it was unethical with Ronan Farrow on their roster unpublishing him equally unethical in my opinion um, and how I see it is people should just ban the publisher altogether um, if you want to stick it to them buy Ronan's book buy it used on Amazon uh, but don't support them because they unpublished Woody they never cared they don't care now and they never will care and that's basically it. I mean, Woody's fine. He's going to be fine. He's going to get his book out there. He can self-publish it. Uh, I didn't get the numbers for this. I wish I did. But allegedly, huge grain of salt here. Uh, I followed it when it came out, but I never read the book. I don't really give a shit about the book. But uh, Milo Yiannopoulos had a similar issue. Um, he was going to be published. There's a big controversy, actually, about pedophilia. Unpublished. He sold the book independently. It was like the highest-selling self-published book ever, allegedly. Um... It'll be interesting how it plays out. I don't know.